Well, this is a watch that certainly needs no introduction, so I won't even bother with one. This is the Richard Mill RM1103 Rose Gold and Titanium. We are really talking about the upper echelons of the watch game with this piece here. Although it's obviously not one of the oldest watch houses, only being conceptualised and formalised in 2001, Richard Mill has come out with a bang ever since, since its inception. Richard Mill describes itself as a racing machine for the wrist, and really that is what it is, and no, no, none more so than this, uh, the classic and the most recognisable, the Richard Mill RM1103. Today we're going to go through the RM11 lineup, uh, the differences um, that have been throughout the years, and obviously finish off on the RM1103, which is the classic and probably the most recognisable Richard Mill on the market today. Richard Mill really doubled down on their uh, racing ma machine for the wrist with their genius marketing moves over the years. Obviously, as we know, Richard Mill has partnered with and sponsored a number of different sports stars in a number of different sports over the years, but none more so than racing. But for example, some of the sports we've seen are golf, with obviously with the Bubba Watson, tennis with the Rafael Nadal. But as I said, racing machine for the wrist, they have really been sponsoring mainly uh, Formula One stars and teams. So for example, we've had uh, partnerships with Ferrari, uh, Felipe Massa, which was the original RM11, which we're going to speak about in a second. Uh, Jean Todd with the RM1103 with the Quartz TPT. Uh, McLaren Automotive, the, the RM1103 in the orange, uh, which you can see up on screen now. Um, and the Finnish watch ever made, which was the RM6101 Up, which was uh, with sponsorship with uh, Ferrari's Charles Leclerc, which is a really groundbreaking piece. So as I said, they've been in the racing game, uh, calling it a racing machine for the wrist for a long time, and it really does make sense, and we're going to delve into that a lot further now. So, on to this racing machine for the wrist. This is the RM1103, obviously. However, rather confusingly, the 1103 is actually the fourth iteration of the RM11. Who knew that, eh? Uh, so the first one um, was the RM11, which was released firstly in 2007 in collaboration with the epitomous F1 driver, Felipe Massa. If you see my video on that, uh, click the link in the banner up now. I've done a video on that about a year ago, uh, back when there was only 180 grand. Obviously, there are quite a bit more now, so it's always good. You should listen to my advice in that video, eh? The RM11 is powered by Richard Mill's in-house RMAC 1 uh, caliber, which is a fantastic movement. It's a flyback chrono, which means you can reset uh, reset the chronograph without stopping the chronograph in general, which is different to most chronos, which I did also speak about on the RM11 video. Also has oversized date and a 60 second countdown. So it's a great watch and I think the RM11 is really the watch that started to put Richard Mill on the map when it was released in 2007. Uh, it's one of their most popular models and the RM11 line has continued to be their most popular models as we've seen throughout the years. Following on from the RM11, we've got the RM1101 Roberto Mancini, which was obviously uh, created in collaboration with the Italian football manager, uh, Roberto Mancini. This is a really cool watch and I think it's a great, great bit of in engineering. It's perhaps one of the most interesting complications that I've uh, ever seen on a watch. Not something that you'd use every day, but it just goes to show the over-engineering that Richard Mill will go to to make something useful in one of their wristwatches. They really, uh, the, Richard Mill himself has stated that he doesn't like the idea of luxury without purpose. And the RM1101 Mancini really does serve the purpose that it was created for. The RM1101 Mancini was released in 2013 and is equipped with a modified RMAC 1 movement, which was made specifically to help uh, Roberto Mancini uh, in his footballing exploits. The complications on this watch feature an annual calendar, a flyback chrono and a dial divided into periods of play, uh, which is obviously unique in watchmaking. Although it looks simple to operate, it is not. Uh, the dial is actually divided into two 45 minute halves and an additional extra 15 minutes for stoppage time. Uh, during a football match, uh, the players and the manager cannot actually see how much stoppage time has been added, so having a watch like this helps Mancini know um, exactly how much time is left when he resets the buttons on the chrono uh, and the countdown timers um, in order to know and strategize best in order to help his team win the game. And obviously it helped. Uh, Italy won the Euros uh, last year, obviously the final against England. Um, maybe the Mancini came into play. After you, uh, Italy won that game, I saw a lot more demand for the Mancini. There was people in the group chats and uh, messaging looking to buy that watch, obviously probably speculating that that watch would go up based on the fact that Mancini had just won the Euros. It did go up a little bit, but um, then it dropped back down to its original market price. He hasn't said whether the watch helped him or not, but I like to think it might have. 
In everyday life, this feature isn't going to come in handy, but it's a cool thing to have on a watch. I mean, who really uses the Daytona Chrono to time races now or actually goes diving with a Submariner or a Deep Sea? They are tall watches and they have been used for that purpose. Um, obviously, Mancini uses the 1101 Mancini for his purpose. However, anyone buying it for day to day probably isn't going to use it. But it's nice to know it's there and it's nice to know that something has been engineered to such a level that it can do things like that because you know, there's, there's many pieces that can't do that. So I, I, for one, think it's a really cool story and a great complication to have on that piece. Following on from the 1101 Mancini, in 2014, uh, the RM1102 uh, dual time zone or GMT as is often referred to was released. The 1102 is uh, obviously pretty similar in shape as you can see uh, with the classic tonu shaped case uh, as the original RM11 um, and yeah so it looks very very similar however there are a few differences to point out. Obviously the clue is in the name it is a dual time zone so it has an additional hand uh, covered in super luminova uh, obviously for setting dual time zones. The 1102 dual time zone uses the RMAC 1102, which is an in-house movement which was developed specifically for the dual time zone piece. As I said, the 1102 does look pretty similar to the original RM11, however there are a few subtle differences to look out for. Firstly, obviously as I said it's a GMT, so to, in order to be a GMT, it's got to have the GMT hand. As you can see up on the dial, there is a hand covered in superluminova with a triangle, obviously at the end of it, um, as is tradition for a GMT hand. Uh, this is obviously a super bright hand um, which is used for the dual time zones. Secondly, the sub dials on the chrono are a lot brighter on the 1102 as, as opposed to on the 11. On the 11, as we've seen, it's uh, sort of, uh, you know, just sort of plainer colours like the white or the black, whereas on the 1102 GMT we have yellows and greens, so it's a much more vibrant and brighter dial. Thirdly, obviously it does have the classic Tonu case with the winder at uh, 3 o'clock and the pushers for the chrono at 2 and 5, but there is an additional pusher on the left side of the case at 9 o'clock which is actually used to set that GMT hand. So the differences aren't massive, but if you know what you're looking out for, you can really know how to tell the difference between an 11, an 11 1101 and 1102. I for one think the bright dial really is quite nice and I think it makes a difference. And I think Richard Mill obviously agreed with that because they've kept the brightness on the 1103 which we'll be moving on to now. Now we move on to what is perhaps everyone's favourite RM11. It's definitely mine, my favourite and a favourite of uh, a lot of collectors I know. This is the RM1103. The 1103 was released in 2016 and was obviously an instant hit. Looking at that case it's absolutely stunning. I would say the 1103 is perhaps the most recognisable Richard Mill. It is perhaps the one that is called to mind when people think of Richard Mill. Or an, definitely the one that's caught to mind when thinking of the 1103 especially in this configuration this is the classic Richard Mill this is the one that people want and this is the one that is spoken about day to day the concept of the piece hasn't changed from the original RM11 however almost all of the parts mechanical and visual have been reworked the bezel and the case have evolved with rivets around the case with which RM state is the new silhouette for the sportier watches of the brand which differentiates it from RM's more elegant collection RM themselves state that the new shape also reinforces the structural integrity of the iconic sports watch. The RM1103 was available in a number of metals including titanium, rose gold, north ply TPT and blue quartz TPT. Obviously the one I have here today is the RM1103 rose gold and titanium. For me, I think the rose gold and titanium is probably the best RM1103. Uh, when spending that sort of money on a watch, I mean about 300k, I like to know that I'm wearing a watch really and I like to have a feel a bit of a wrist presence. Obviously the others do have the case size, however, obviously being TPT carbon, uh, they are pretty light watches. Uh, obviously this having rose gold has got a bit more weight to it. And I, and I for one am a fan of having a bit more weight. Obviously today I'm wearing the 5980 in rose gold, this is a weighty watch as well. Um, it's obviously nice to know that you're feeling, you're wearing something of value and something of weight. Some of these other Richard Mills, whilst great, I, I really like them. I Sometimes I find they're a bit too light, almost like you wouldn't even know if it wasn't on your wrist. So for me, the RM1103 in rose gold and titanium is probably the best one because it's got a significant weight to it. That isn't to say it's heavy, but obviously due to the sheer case size, uh, you know, you do notice the wrist presence. The case size on the 1103 measures 49.94 mil by 44.5 by 16.15. So obviously it is a large case um, and you do notice this wrist presence. Uh, so it's not probably something that you'd want to wear every day. However, you know, owning a Richard Mille RM1103, it's not going to be your only watch. I doubt anyone's going to start their watch collection off with a watch of this caliber and this prestige. You would definitely have a collection of one or a dozen watches in your, uh, in your stable to swap out from day to day. 
then this definitely should be one in any serious collective stable. That's what I think, and I, many people would agree with that. The RM1103 uh, features a new in-house movement from Richard Mill, the RMAC3 movement, which was uh, developed specifically for this watch. This watch has obviously got a skeletonized dial, um, skeletonized movement, uh, flyback chrono, and a 60 second countdown timer. Obviously the skeletonized dial is something that has become a classic and eponymous with the brand of Richard Mill. Those are the two probably most recognizable characteristics of Richard Mill, the tonu shaped case and the skeletonized dial. And it's good to see them keeping with that in the classic in the RM1103. So let's talk about pricing. Obviously in all the models we discussed, the RM1103 was the latest one. So obviously it's the most expensive out of the models we've discussed today. Um, however, obviously the watch market has come down in the last six months or so. So these have had a small correction as well. Uh, so they're a little bit more affordable, but obviously still at the high end of the market. At the start of the year, these watches were trading between 350 and 400,000 pounds. And obviously it's due to the correction, prices have come down. This watch is available today for 300,000 pounds. Richard Mill has a very low production and very low supply. So the brand's models have been relatively well insulated from the mass market drop that we have seen uh, this year. However, that being said, prices obviously have come down a little bit, but not, as, not to the extent that other brands have. Although this probably may have been slightly overinflated at 400k, so it's good to see a little bit of a correction, maybe a bit more affordability on the market um, for a few more people. However, you still have to be a bit of a serious collector to be spending 300k on a piece like this. But it does really fit well into any collection. I, for one, am a massive fan of it. I'd be keen to find out what you think. What do you think of all the models we've discussed today? Which one would you choose out of the four RM11s? For me, I'd definitely go with this one, but I'd be interested to hear your take. Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for tuning in, and if you're looking for a new watch, don't forget to phone Frankie first.